Static electricity, it's one of those things that I've never really had too much concern for though whenever I seem to be handling parts or building a computer, there's always someone in the comment section that just goes off and goes, Oh man, you have to wear an anti-static wrist strap when you're doing that. Where's your anti-static builders mat, man? You're gonna completely destroy those parts. And so since I've got this $100 PC in the back here and I've already been running a few tests on it, I thought, hey, why not just you know, charge myself up and then touch the parts and then see if it still turns on. So let's do a couple of tests. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, ladies and gentlemen. This is Brian, and we're back to you guys today with a video on static electricity and how much of it is a bad thing. And so before doing this video, I did watch another video from a channel called Do It Yourself Trying. And now the video was very entertaining and it was very funny. And one thing that it did show is that static electricity can damage parts. Though I just think the conditions were not even remotely similar to a real world uh, environment. And so today I'm gonna try some real world conditions touch these parts and see if the computers or uh, well, the computer still boots up. So first up here we have the Seagate hard drive so I'm just going to quickly charge myself put it in the computer see if it boots up. So here's test one and it looks like it's a pass for the hard disk drive. So charging ourselves up on the carpet and then touching the hard drive and then installing it to a ungrounded computer um, still results in this computer booting up into Windows. Let's move on now to part two. So here's test number two, the memory, and the computer is still loading. So it looks like test number two is passed as well. So now we'll try the graphics card. So here's test number three, this is the graphics card and it's booting up, everything's booting up fine. So let's get on to the final test now where I'm going to charge myself up as best as I can and then touch the motherboard which is essentially connected to everything and then we'll try and see if it turns on. Okay, so here is the final test. Um, I just thought I'd show you guys without any breaks or anything like that. So, it looks like it might have froze. This time around, it might have froze on boot. Let's try and restart it.
Okay, looks like it's booting this time, so... <laughs> Let's um let's move on to a conclusion. This is booting and it looks like it yeah, it's booting into Windows absolutely fine. So four tests and four passes. Let's move on to conclusion now. So in conclusion, besides working up a sweat, we didn't manage to damage any of these components. That's not to say though that static electricity can't damage computer parts. I think the do-it-yourself trying video already proved that you can very well damage computer components with static electricity in the sense that you're over-volting or putting too much voltage through the said components. Uh, however, I mean, it was kind of pointless in a way because as overclockers, we already know that if you put too many volts through a component, you'll fry it. So basically with my test though, I wanted to test, hey, uh, in real world conditions, rubbing your feet on carpet, whatever, um, producing a, you know, just a little bit of static electricity, is that enough to damage computer components? And in the last case, we saw that my computer didn't boot properly, so that was pretty interesting, though none of the components are damaged. And as a, also as a final test, I did decide to take it down on the weekend to the park and go down the slippery slide where I actually managed to zap the computer. And so it still survived. So how much static electricity a component can take? I don't know exactly. I'm not a scientist, I'm just a tech reviewer. Though I will say this in closing, when you're handling sensitive parts, go ground yourself before you do so. That's what my recommendation has always been around here, either by just touching a grounding point in your house, or if you can't find a grounding point, just go outside and touch your car. Though if you are one of those people who are just constantly shocking everything you touch, then you may wish to indeed go out and buy an anti-static wristband or an anti-static builder's mat. That's up to you. Personally, I don't need that. I don't believe in that. My 15 years of building computers, I've never broken apart after I've statically shocked something. Hell, I've had parts spark up in front of me and they've still worked. So that's why I'm kind of a little bit, um, I guess, a little bit anti-anal retentative, if that that's the way to describe it against the whole static electricity thing and I will say at the end of the day I did my tests here and none of the components were damaged and this was beyond the normal level of statically shocking things I went beyond the mile I didn't know what the results would be I didn't know that's why I tested it on my cheap um, rig that already has four dead RAM slots and that's how it came when I bought it so <laughs> So that's it from me guys, please give it a big thumbs up if you like this video or if you have any questions or comments then drop a comment in the comment section below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And that's about it, I'm going to go drink some mango juice because it's getting pretty hot in here. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon, peace out for now, bye. Or circuitry. So what I've done with this memory of us sprayed on seven different kinds of spray paint. Uh, so on the right we got like white, gold, silver, pink black and white and I've just sprayed it all on made sure I've got it on the circuits there and so I'm just going to put this memory in see if the computer boots up